So it's the middle of summertime and the AC units are running non-stop. Well, some of you in some of my other videos many months ago mentioned products like this one right here, where this goes on your outdoor condenser unit. And what it basically does is it cools the outdoor condenser unit using water. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how this is installed. I'm also gonna do some testing before installing it and after installing it to see what kind of a difference we can expect. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so here is everything that comes in the kit. There's not a whole lot here. It's not a real complicated installation. We've got our main hose, which is going to be bringing in the water. We've got three shorter hoses here, which are going to be installed on the unit itself and therefore supplying the water to that condenser unit. And then there's what looks like this paddle right here. This is the on and off valve. This is what's gonna be responsible for then supplying the water to the unit. So it only allows water to run when the AC unit is on and this is in the on position. Then there's also this filter right here. They say that it is about a three month filter. In the winter time, obviously you're not gonna wanna have this set up or installed because you don't want water spraying onto your unit and therefore freezing. But this filter is designed to remove scale, those mineral deposits that are in a lot of water. It's gonna help with hard water. It would really help to have a water softener and then this on top of it. If the water is too hard, it can do some damage to the unit. So that's why this is so important and why a water softener can really, really help because pretty much everybody has hard water to some extent. And then there are these little brass pieces here. These are actually the misters so that the water's not just spraying on in a jet. It's actually getting misted through the air, cooling the air, and then that cooler air is being brought into the condenser unit, cooling it down. And included in the kit, of course, is their instructions. But here on the front, as you can see, this is called a cool-in save. And they say that it can save as much as 30% on the cost of cooling your home. And then down here at the bottom, it says that it pays for itself after a few months of use. Now I will say this is a little bit more expensive kit than some of you were recommending I take a look at. There are some on Amazon that do also have a filter in them to help with that hard water, but the difference is they won't have the actuator or the valve that only turns on when the AC unit is running. But I'll have links for this, which you cannot get on Amazon right now. It has to come directly from the company. And I'll also list one of those other products that also has a filter on it that some people have been known to use. Just make sure to do your due diligence and make sure it's something that you would actually want to install on your unit. But I'll have links for this one and the one that I found on Amazon along with everything else that you see in this video down in the description down below so that you can find it a little bit easier. All right, so the first test that I wanna do before installing it is I wanna find out how many amps is my unit or my compressor using in order to cool my home. So I need to locate my compressor R wire or compressor run wire. And that can be easily done by looking at the diagrams that are usually on the inside of the panel that's taken off the AC unit. So you're looking for compressor and then you're looking for R, which in this case is going to be my yellow wire, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna put my clamp meter on that wire. This way we can get an initial reading and then after the installation, I'll take another reading and see if we've lowered the amperage required in order to run the compressor and therefore cool my home. And as you can see, this unit is averaging around 11.9, almost 12 amps in order to run that compressor. So once we get the cool and save installed, hopefully that lowers the amperage that's required to run the compressor, which if we're able to lower that, then we're obviously able to lower our electric bill and possibly buy a pretty good amount. But now I'm gonna go inside and do another test. All right, so as you can see here, our pre-installation temperature at this vent or register is around 57.7. So now we're gonna go ahead and install the cool and save and see if we can't bring that temperature down some. Now, even though we're not gonna be doing anything electrical, it's always safest to make sure that we have no power going to our unit. So in this case, I have this disconnect out by my AC unit. So I just pull the disconnect. I can insert it back in upside down, or you can always leave it in on top and then close the box. Or you may have a circuit breaker or a fuse, whatever it is that turns off the power to your AC unit, make sure to turn that off anytime you're doing work on your AC. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna install my main supply line to my nearest hose bib. Now, my supply line is about 20 feet long. If you need longer than that, then they do make extra sections that can be purchased, 
or obviously you could always just add a hose to the hose bib and then connect this to the end of the hose and that would work fine as well. But hopefully you've already got a hose bib that's within 20 feet of your AC unit. As you can see, there's a filter on the inside of this to help keep the debris away from going through the supply line and then clogging the misters. But with these vacuum breakers on here and this filter being on the inside of this connection here, I cannot put this on the hose bib. This bottom part of the vacuum breaker and this middle piece right here are getting in the way. So in order to make that connection, you may have to remove the vacuum breaker, which would not be to code. These are required by code to be on all hose bibs. So what I've elected to do is just take one of these splitters, put it over the vacuum breaker, install that onto the vacuum breaker itself. And now that that's on there nice and tight, now I can take my main line connection and connect it to that splitter. So again, a good way to get around this, just purchase a really inexpensive splitter. You can actually turn them on and off as you please and still hook up a hose to this hose bib. All right, so now that we've got the main line connected to the hose bib, I need to make a cut somewhere in between the hose bib and the AC unit in order to install the filter. And as you can see on each side of the filter is an input. So the key to installing this is this can lay on the ground. That's no problem. In fact, that might actually be preferred, but you don't wanna cut your main line so close to either the AC unit or to your hose bib to where then this, the weight of this would be hanging on it. We don't want there to be any strain on the inputs of our supply line. So I'm gonna cut mine right here in the middle to where my filter can just lay on the ground. I'm gonna do that by using a pair of side cuts. And then once that cut has been made, then I'll just insert each side of the supply line back into the filter. Next, I'm going to want to install my valve. For the most part, on most units, it's gonna go right here in the center because you're generally going to have the same amount of airflow all the way around. But in an effort to make it as efficient as possible, I would try and put the paddle in between one of these two metal bars here. So the majority of the paddle is exposed to the air that's being blown up. Now, if you buy one of the products from Amazon, you can skip this step because you're not going to have this. But before I remove the film and expose the adhesive to stick down my valve, I wanna make sure that I prep the area, clean it up really nice so that there's no dirt or any grime on it that's going to take away from a good adhesion between the valve and the top of the unit itself. Then once I've done that, I can remove the protective film from the bottom, exposing that adhesive, and I wanna place it right in the middle of the top of my unit. And then once it's in place, hold it down for around 10 to 15 seconds. All right, so now at this point, I'm gonna take my main supply line and I wanna connect it to the valve itself. But if you have too much excess of your supply line and you want everything to be kind of nice and neat, then what you can do is you can just kind of measure out the excess that you have and kind of put it up to the valve where it's gonna go in. Mark that point with your fingers and then we can just cut off that excess, whatever it may be for you. Then once that excess is cut off, we can insert it into this blue port where it also says in. And all we gotta do is just push it in there nice and tight like we did with the cartridge. And now just give it a tug and you can see it won't just pull out. All right, so now that we've got the main supply line hooked up, now we need to take our three misting tubes and there are still three ports open on the valve itself. Each one of these misting tubes is going to get plugged into one of those corresponding ports. And then the rest of it will go down along the sides of the condenser. We want to get it to as close as we can to the middle of each one of those sections of the condenser on each side. There's three sides that these are going to go on. So in order to do that, before these are connected to the valve itself, you'll kind of want to dry fit them. And then once you figure out the length that you're going to need for each side, cut them off to the length that they need to be, and then you can run them onto the size that they are to go on. Now for me personally, I use zip ties in order to make sure that these are connected to the unit. That way they're not just waving around. That way they're in the correct place at all times, supplying a consistent amount of mist to that area. And on top of all of that, it just makes it look more organized and a lot better to zip tie them all down so that you have nice tight lines and they're not just hanging there. All right, so now I've got all of my lines run and we wanna make sure that the nozzles are pointing out away from the condenser. Some people might think they should be pointing towards the condenser so the water is going directly onto the coils. But what we really wanna do is now that we're gonna install these brass misters into these ports, we actually want that mist being pushed away from the condenser. And as this is running, it's going to suck that cooler air in. The idea is not necessarily to put water on the coils themselves, it's to cool the air 
on the outside of the unit. Of course, there's still going to be some mist in it still, but the idea is getting that cooler air going over those coils to make this run much more efficiently to get rid of that heat. So these misters are super easy to install. You can see they're threaded here on the top. And so we're just going to put that into that port and we're just going to twist that in clockwise until it gets nice and tight. And now we're going to do the same thing on the remaining two lines. All right, so now at this point, we can now turn on the hose bib that we connected our main line to. I can reconnect power going out to my AC unit. And I can turn the thermostat on and watch to make sure that it works properly. All right, so as you can see, that paddle is lifting up because of the fan pushing up on it. And each one of the misters is now supplying water which is cooling the air around the condenser. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that mist is coming out, but then it's being pulled back in to the condenser so that it can cool it down. All right, so I'm gonna let this run for about 10 minutes like we did with the initial testing. Then I'll come back, take a measurement to see how many amps this is pulling now, and then go inside to take another temperature reading to see if we get a lower temperature at our vents. All right, so the unit's been running for about 10 or 15 minutes now. And as you can see, we're getting about 10.4, 10.5 amps. Whereas before on our initial reading, we were getting like 11.9 or 12, which is a reduction of about one and a half amps, which actually can make a pretty big difference on an electrical bill as much as your AC unit runs. So I would call this test a success. All right, so now back inside here, checking the thermometer. And now we're getting a reading of 56.5, which I believe our initial reading was around 57.7. Oh, it just went up to 56.7, might be because I'm underneath of it, but it's hovering between that 56.7 and 56.5, which is at least one degree cooler than our initial reading. And with this cooling at a degree less than it was earlier, that means that the AC unit is not gonna have to run as long. And the less that the AC unit has to run, you save a lot of money by that unit just not running at all. So the big factor is how much cooler can you get the air which in this case is at least a degree and at one point a little bit over a degree drop in combination with the one to one and a half amp drop that we had out at the unit itself. So with those two things combined, I can definitely see how this is gonna save quite a bit of money on the electric bill and it may even be a substantial amount. So you can clearly see the benefit. Again, I'll have links for everything you saw in this video down in the description down below. But if you'd like to learn more about how to make your AC unit run more efficiently, therefore cooling better, running less, lowering that electric bill, then click on this video right over here where I go in depth on what should be a regular maintenance item that's gonna allow for that AC unit to run more efficiently. So I hope that you found this video to be helpful. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.